We're back with Kani Lau, Director, President, and CEO of Hawaiian Electric Industries. What's the top three bits of advice that you would give to women that are in careers, wanting to move up, but also wanting to have a family? Um, number one, don't ever sacrifice your family. Um, if you want to have a family, uh, you should have a family and then your family really needs to come first uh, because I've seen too many women sacrifice the family for the job and then frankly they're unhappy and they don't do a good good uh, good job you know they're not good um, in their career you know number two I guess it's not any different than anybody else um, uh, pick a career that matches your personality and your interests and the things that you like to do because if you are passionate about what you do and you enjoy what you do uh, then you'll do it better um, so that's a piece of advice I think I would just give to anyone um, and then thirdly I'd look for a company that is um, you know more people friendly uh, companies that are sort of the newer style companies that believe that having a good balance in life is important um, because uh, you know sometimes if you choose the wrong company <laughs> that is really rigid and makes you do things in a certain way um, it, you know that can that can make you unhappy no matter how interesting the work might be um, and it can make it much more difficult to balance work and, and family. While you're trying to balance the family and your career, you're also married to your husband who runs Finance Factors, mm -hmm. and so you both have really important positions running companies, somewhat competitors too. Yeah, we are. So. <laughs> we are actually direct competitors. <laughs> you know, you have this cohesive family and then you leave the house and it's like, game face on <laughs> but you know how, how were you folks be able to balance that because you know like you said family always came first and that was important for the both of you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well on the business front and I don't know if I ever told you this story <laughs> our companies are actually direct competitors and um, so when I first came to American and I was going around meeting all the employees and I went to our mortgage department uh, I recognized this fellow in the corner and uh, uh, I, I, I thought he worked for my husband but then there he was you know at, at our place at American with all, all my other employees and so I started talking about uh, who I was and where I wanted to take the company and at the end of the whole session I went up to say hello to him and I said, oh, I didn't know that you, you know, moved from Finance Factors over to American. And he said, oh, no, Connie, you know, I still work for Finance Factors. <laughs> and he was there because he was actually brokering loans to American. So it was, it was the funniest thing. And so, you know, in this community, Carrie, you just learn that everybody is related to everybody else, you know. And, and so you, you know, I, I've always operated on the, on the principle that there are no secrets in this community. Um, and that's the reason why I, you know, I live my life like an open book. Um, because I'm always thinking that uh, even if I tried to hide something, some auntie or you know cousin somewhere was going to know what I was doing, and you know it was it would get out anyway. <laughs> well, how do you um, handle the competition then at in at when you get home? I mean, you competing during the day, but at night you're still competing or what? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering. We, well, first of all, we don't we don't bring the job home, um, and because we have three kids, we're always busy talking about the kids and figuring out who's going to pick up, you know, which kid and who's going to take the other kid to soccer and who's going to go to the clarinet recital or you know all of those kinds of things. So, we have lots of um, activities to coordinate on the home front. So, trying to bring business things into that makes it really really hard. Yeah. I actually think it helps to have a husband who is a CEO because you know just as you ask the question of um, you know can the can the job always wait or sometimes maybe it can't wait 
uh, you know, ha being married to somebody who also is a CEO, he understands that sometimes the job can't wait. And he understands, you know, when I have to get up, say, at, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning because the East Coast has opened up and I need to make a conference call or get on a conference call. And he doesn't give me grief about that. Because <laughs> I know, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys out there that would give their uh, wives grief uh, about getting up at that, those kinds of hours or sometimes having to stay late at work and vice versa. I know a lot of guys that... That, you know, their wives are at home with the kids expecting that they're going to come home for dinner and we've got something that can't wait and it's got to get finished. Um, so I actually think it's helpful to um, be married to somebody who's also a working person and has a career. Who were your key mentors um, in the process of you trying to be a role model, but you know, everyone always needs development further. <laughs> that That's probably one of the things that as a woman you have less of. Um, I, I can't really think of having had too many mentors, um, you know, uh, along the way. Uh, you know, other than I was very close to both of my parents. Um, but I, I think when, you know, you are a woman or you, you know, you were a woman during the time that I came through the ranks, um, there's, there's very few people who are actually there uh, to kind of take you under their wing. Um, you know, sometimes I see young people today uh, where they've been sort of designated as a star and then people really kind of watch over them. I don't know that that ever really, you know, happened happened to me, um, and that's part of the reason why I try to do that for, uh, you know, young people that I see today. What kind of challenges have you um, experienced um, personally in regards to developing and also leading the bank, and how did you overcome those challenges? The the one thing about getting to the top is that unfortunately sometimes there are people who want to pull you down <laughs> um, and for me I think what you have to keep remembering is uh, to always take the high road uh, and I think you know if you start thinking about being a role model that's what people would expect you to do is you, you need to take the high road uh, and you need to sort of develop the sense within yourself that is, you know, almost like this um, uh, this space where things um, are all right and good, uh, and be directed from that kind of position. Um, you know, it's a position of, of great integrity. It's a position of um, great caring. It's a position of. Um, you know, r really making sure that you always do things that are right for the organization, uh, right for other people, um, and you know when you when you just live your life that way, it gets to be very easy. Uh, even though uh, you know people may be attacking you like crazy, um, you know if you're in that space where you can. Uh, you know, be yourself and know that what you're doing is the right thing. Uh, it carries you through, and and um, I've I've never had it um, let me down. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.